We're now going to take a look at perspective grids. And I've started a brand new document because the last document had multiple artboards. Since you can only have one perspective grid across all your artboards, it's a good idea to make a new document when you want to work in perspective. The quickest way to get started is to simply choose the perspective grid tool. And I'll zoom out so we can see all of the handles a little bit more clearly. The important handles here define the ground plane, which effectively moves the entire grid around, and also the horizon, which controls if you are down at the bottom of a tall building looking up, or high up at a building looking down at it. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. The three circular controls at the base of the grids, the horizontal grid control is probably the easiest to get a grasp on. It's not moving the whole grid, but it does effectively move the ground level. On the left and the right, those circles control the orange grid and the blue grid. The right grid is the orange one, and confusingly the original control is on the left. The blue grid with the original control on the right does move those grid positions as well. Now the grids aren't broken, even though they have separated, the grids extend beyond what's visible anyway. So moving the points around changes the position of the grid, but doesn't stop them working. They would work in the empty areas as well as the areas on the grid. So how do the grids work? Well, if you're going to draw a shape, with a grid active, you'll be drawing on one of the shapes. And by default, it will be snapping to the grid if you're near to one of the grid lines. Now, if you don't want the grid snapping to happen, you can go to View Perspective Grid, which is where you find all of these settings, and just turn off Snap to Grid. I can keep drawing squares and circles, and it's always going to go on the Perspective Grid chosen here in the Plane Switcher. If I want to switch between the different planes, say I want to draw a rectangle on the orange plane here, I need to press simply the three key. One, two, and three will cycle you through the left grid, the horizontal grid, or the ground, and the right grid. And now when I draw a shape, it ends up over there. Now all of this is kind of interesting, but do remember the grids do extend past one another. They can, of course, be in front of one another, and your traditional depth controls, that is send forward and send backward, do take precedence over everything else. These are really guidelines. They're the 3D equivalent of the 2D guides we just set up in the last lesson. So what's the practical use of all of this? Well, it can be very useful for mocking up an environment. And if you've brought in a photograph, you can perhaps assign a grid on top of that to match the photograph then place your objects on top of it to augment a photograph.